All right, we're going to take a look at scientific notation. On the top here, you can use a calculator to figure out these values, and then we're going to kind of make some comparisons here. So if I were to plug in 4.7 times 10 to the second power, you should get 470. If I plug in 4.7 times 10 to the third power, you should get 4,700. If I plugged in 4.7 times 10 to the fourth, you should get 47,000 total. Now the reverse, looking at with negative powers. If I were to plug in 4.7 times 10 to the negative first, you should get 0 0.47. If I plug in times 10 to the negative second, you should get 0 0.047. To the negative third, you should get 0 0.0047. And to the negative fourth, you should get 0 0.00047. So let's look at some comparisons there. First off, when we have these positive powers, our numbers are getting bigger. And when we have these negative powers, our numbers are getting into these small decimal values, okay? So scientific notation is used to express numbers that are too big or too small to be conveniently written in decimal form. When a number is written as the product of a factor of an and an integer power of 10, and the number of the factor must be greater than or equal to one and less than 10. What is important to note here is that our, as we have the powers going up positively, our numbers are getting bigger and we are moving our decimal point. When it was to the power of one, we moved the decimal once. When it was the power of two, we moved it once, twice, fill in with a zero. When it was the power of three, we moved it once, twice, three times, filled in with two zeros. And here, once, twice, three times, four times, and filled it in with zeros. So you're moving your decimal point to the right when you've got these positive powers, it's the opposite for the negative power. So negative one, we move it once to the left. Negative two, we move it once, twice to the left, fill in with a zero. Negative three, it's once, twice, three times to the left, fill in with zero, and so on. So the general rules here are that when you have positive exponents, you're moving the decimal to the right. The number of times of the value of the exponent versus negative, you're moving it to the left. So let's actually look at this in play here. So write each number in standard form. So here we have, and I'm gonna highlight these right now actually. I've got positive exponent, positive exponent, positive exponent, and then I'm gonna highlight my negative exponent, negative exponent, and negative exponent. So for my positive exponent, I should be moving my decimal that many times to the right. One, two, three, four to the right, and I'm filling those in with zeros. So we have five, followed by four numbers, three, four, and then two zeros, which would be 53,400. Number two is a negative exponent. So our decimal should be moving to the left. We're moving it once, twice, three times, putting our decimal point in there, filling in with zeros. So we get zero, point zero zero three two seven one way that i kind of remember it is you might notice that it was the power of negative three there are two zeros instead 
Or you can look at it like, yeah, there's three zeros, but the zero to the left of the decimal is counted. Four, six point seven one four to the positive three, we're moving our decimal once, twice, three times, which lands us right at the end. So I've got my six followed by three decimal or three numbers, seven, one, and four. So that's 6,714. Number four, to a positive power, that means we're moving our decimal to the right. One, two, three, four, five, filling in with zeros. So we have our seven followed by four numbers. The four, the two is two of our numbers, and then the three that are left over are gonna be zero. So we have 742,000. Number five is a negative exponent. We should be moving our decimal to the left. One, two, fill it in with a zero, put in our decimal. So we've got 0 0.061. Again, if you want to look at it with your powers, we had negative two, oops, there's going to be one less zero in your decimal. Or you can look at it with the zero as your whole number included. There's two zeros. And to the negative seventh, we're moving it to the left to seven. So if we want to do it without actually moving it, we could count it like we were saying, one zero, two, three, four, five, six zeros, and then our nine, our eight, our three. Now let's look at it the reverse here, okay? So when we're writing it in scientific notation, the most important thing is that the factors need to be um, greater than or equal to one, and less than 10. So it has to be a number between one and 10. So we've got 3,725,000. What that means is that I can only have one number to the left of my decimal. So for these, the three will be to the left, our eight will be to the left, our three to the left, our one to the left, our four to the left, our eight to the left. So when I'm writing my decimal, my three is to the left point, all my other numbers, seven to five, besides my zeros are to the right, times 10 to the power of, well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six to the right, so to the power of six. For number eight, we've got our three is to the left of the decimal, the one and the six are to the right times 10. First off, we know it's a decimal, so we know it's gonna be a negative. Then I'm gonna count. There's one, two, three, four zeros to the left, so negative four. Or you could actually move the decimal. We would have to move it once, twice, three times, four times to get it to the right of the decimal. Number nine, we start with our eight to the left of the decimal, our seven and our six go to the right times 10. It's a decimal value, so we know that it's gonna be a negative. And I can count one, two, three zeros are to the left, so negative three, or actually move our decimal once, twice, three times would get our decimal to the right of the eight. Number 10. My one is gonna to be to the left. The rest are to the right, four, one, four. I don't have to write all those zeros. So I'm just gonna do times 10. And then I'm counting the number to the right of the one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, because we'd have to move our decimal once, twice, two times. Whoops, it should go the other way. Once, twice, two, three, four, five, six, seven times, so to the seventh power. For this, we've got four as our whole number, point two five to the right times 10. 
It's a positive value because it's a big number. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight numbers to the right of the decimal. And our last one here, my eight is gonna be to the left of the decimal point. Three eight is to the right times 10. It's gonna be a negative value since it's a decimal value. There is one, two, three zeros to the left. So to the negative third, or we would move our decimal once, twice, three times. So we can use these to um, compare with inequality symbols. So number 13, we first have a just regular number, standard notation, 678,000. We've got scientific notation. In order to be able to compare these, we need these to be the same. So either I'm gonna make this scientific notation into standard or this standard into scientific notation. Really doesn't matter either way. It's to your preference. Let's say I change this into um, standard notation. So six, seven, eight, that's two of our numbers. We need four more zeros, two, three, four, because that represents one, two, three, four, five, six. I'll put in my commas. So we're comparing 678,000 to 6 million, while the 678,000 is going to be less than. The other way you could have done it is instead turning the number in the left into scientific notation, six point seven, eight times 10, it's gonna be a positive. There's one, two, three, four, five numbers to the right. Then all you would look at is you'd say, well, this is to a power of five, this is to the power of six, six is bigger, so that number would be bigger. So the first one to the fifth power is less. Number 14, they are both in scientific notation and they both are to the same power. So all that I actually have to look at here is our first numbers. We've got 6.25 and 6.3. Remember that 6.3, if we gave it the same amount of decimals, is 30. So 25 is less than 30. So the first number is smaller than And last part, applying this to um, put things in order from least to greatest. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of highlight these different values here. Right here, I've got to the seventh power. This is also to the seventh power versus these two are to the sixth power. So I'm going least to greatest. I know that my power six to the power of six is gonna be smaller than the power of seven. So between these two, the 1.83 is smaller than 7.15. So that's gonna be my first number. And this is gonna be my second. Then between my powers of seven, we've got 1.03 and 1.06. 1.03 is smaller, which means the 1.06 is the biggest. So when I'm listing them in order, I'm gonna list the actual, um, uh, country and you can use abbreviations if you want. So our smallest is India, then we have Mexico, then we have Canada, then we have the United Kingdom. Let's do the same thing for number 16. First, I'm gonna highlight those that are similar. So we've got the power of 10, power of 10, we've got the power of six and the power of seven. Least to greatest again. Uh, my six is going to be my smallest, then seven. Then I'm just be comparing between the tens. 0.12 is smaller than 0.22. So this is our third. This is our fourth. So let's list out what we're talking about. We're talking about year three first, then year four, then year two, then year one. And that is it.